Anything that penetrates the brick veneer has to be flashed. Anything that would impede the flow of water in that airspace all the way to the base of the wall and out, anything that crosses that airspace has to be flashed. Thus, notice a nice drawing here showing you how a window should be flashed at the head as well as at the sill. What I would like you to notice as far as the sill is concerned is that 15 degree slope or about three quarters of an inch. It's very important. You'd be surprised how much water hits a window and cascades down its face and onto that windowsill. And if it's practically level, and obviously if it were leaning back toward the house, listing that way, that would be a problem. So slope on that windowsill is very important. I'd like you to notice how this process goes together from the base flashing all the way to the top of the window. With this slide that you're looking at, at the base you have a, a recessed brick ledge. And the first thing you'd do as a mason is come and put on your base flashing. Then your paper would start up the wall. And uh, as the paper is applied, each layer would lap about two inches, according to code, over the one under it so that it shingles and the water can run to the base and uh, exit the wall. The rough openings, once they're crossed with the paper, you just cut the paper in the center of the opening and kind of fold it in, tuck it into the opening. A little added protection there, and then the paper continues on up to the top. One thing I should mention is as you cut that top piece and fold it in on the sides, that's fine, but at the very top of the window it should not fold in. You could direct water into the opening if you weren't careful, if there were a small hole in the house wrap or paper above that window. So notice here how it's folded up. Then all the mason has to do, after adding the wall ties, of course, the proper amount of ties, is to begin laying the brick. Obviously he'd stop at sill height, put in a piece of flashing there. And notice how it extends past the window a bit on each side, and there's even a small dam turned up in the head joints on each side of that opening, and then the sill is placed. Now the brickwork can be carried up to the next benchmark, if you will, uh, the top of the window. Then an, an angle iron or lentil can be placed across the top, bearing at least four inches, keep in mind, according to code, on each side of that opening. A piece of flashing then can be placed there. And again, please notice it extends eight to ten inches or a foot or so past that opening. And then when the brick are laid, you can again turn a little dam or turn the ends up and form a dam on both sides. Uh, of that opening before the brick are laid. Then that piece of paper can be folded down or shingle over the top of that leading edge of the flashing and the rest of the brick can be laid. It's a small example, just one window, but what it shows you is what could take place on the side of a, of a much larger building. That wall won't leak. Seems as though one of the areas in a building that leaks the most often is the window head. And really it shouldn't, it's such a simple application. The installation isn't hard, so what I thought I'd like you to see is the components first, and then how easy it is to make a little end dam in the flashing across the head of this window. As you see, one side's been completed. We've left this area exposed. So we have a nice galvanized angle iron being used as a lintel here to cross this small opening. It has about a four inch bearing, the masonry underneath, which satisfies the code, minimum four inch bearing. We have our peel and stick flashing here in place and a little termination bar here at the top so that it doesn't turn loose through the years and fall into the cavity at the leading edge of the flashing. So what I'd like to do now, I've laid a couple of brick here to get it started. I'm gonna lay two more and uh, create an end dam. We do have a rope wick here I might draw your attention to as a weeping device at the head of the window. Okay, notice how easy it is. And I should also point out that the piece of flashing has been allowed not to terminate here close by the window, so somehow the water could get over and then run down the jam. But we've allowed the piece of flashing to extend about eight 
inches past the face of the window. So to form the dam, it's just a matter of turning up the leading edge into the head joint, spreading the mortar on the next brick, Nice full head joint. Notice how the flashing's in the head joint. Now what we've done is successfully dam up any water that might get behind this wall. It can't run past this area unless it gets three or four inches deep and it's not gonna do that. So what we've done effectively is dam up both sides of the flashing at the window head and we're making the rope wicks do their job in getting any moisture that might get in here at the window head out. Believe me, without this piece of flashing, I'll get a call, because this is where it seems to leak most often. One other thing too I'd like you to notice that above this window, the flashing that we referred to in our flashing section is a thin sheet of copper impregnated in asphalt. That was just tucked above the bond beam that crosses that window right into the wall. And as it hangs out here, once the brick are laid and the angle iron or lentil is placed across that opening, it'll be placed through the wall with a couple of weep holes above it. So again, a very nice way to keep water out of the head of the window. Mm -hmm.